Hello everyone. I thought I would show a really dumb project I was working on over the holidays. Basically I went to JCar, I got a Raspberry Pi 4 and a bunch of accessories like a little battery kit display. This junk, janky ass cable that goes between this thing. I don't know why it's like this. Uh, I reckon if I soldered something it'd probably look a lot neater. Anyway, so I'm calling this project the, the Windows Pi because I've tried my best to make it look like an old Windows operating system and I've also spent ages tweaking everything to actually run on a display this small. So the display is uh, 480 by 320 pixels. Apparently that's considered like a higher range display for these things but either way it lags it lags quite considerably because it doesn't plug in via HDMI like you'd expect. It actually goes straight in the GPIO. means it needs special software and is a bit of a bitch to start but hey it works since it's uh, a Raspberry Pi 4 you can actually use the uh, USB 3 ports to do things like I'm probably going to use this device to actually clone hard drives and stuff from now on uh, I've got Clonezilla it can read pretty much any petition known to man so I thought hey this could work I've also got an on-screen keyboard thing installed onto it yeah, look at that. And I've also got some software I downloaded that lets you right click by holding down the touch screen. Either way, um, so what can this thing do um, other than, you know, just be Linux with a Windows theme? Well, I have installed Box86, which lets you run x86 programs from like a normal desktop computer. And then on top of that, I've also installed Wine. So you can actually run. Um, quite a library of um, old XP apps and stuff on here. So I thought, hey, what the hell, I'll try to launch paint. It does take a while to, to launch anything with Box86, like it takes like probably 15 or 20 seconds to actually boot the program. But once it gets that going, um, you can have a bit of fun with it. So this is just the Windows XP paint. Yeah, there we go. And as, it, as you can see, like, it's half the bottom toolbar to select your color is off the screen. But it does work. So, voila. Cool. That's, uh, that's paint. I also spent a bit of time to get MIDI files working as well. On the desktop, I have got... Yeah, a little program that I made in Multimedia Fusion in like two seconds that just plays like the Windows Flowers uh, music. Now, I don't actually have like earphones or a little speaker on this thing. I do have a gaming headphone thing that I'm not using, so I could bring that around. Hopefully, put this near the camera. <laughs> it's this thing has been collecting dust for like ages, sitting in the cupboard. But, hey, it'll be good enough to just test sound because it's literally the only thing I've got <laughs> with an aux jack at the moment. Alright. See whether I even double click that correctly. Normally there's a little loading icon on the mouse when you know it's working. I've probably ran it like six times. Yeah. Oh, wait, there it is. Yep, yep, and there they are. I can only just hear it. Yeah, they're all <laughs> it's running like three instances. You're gonna be able to listen to ten songs at the same time. Well, there you go. There's there's the sound. Now I want to really push the um, compatibility layer as much as I could. I, I did notice that the Windows XP pinball doesn't play the music. It works functionally. It's slow as hell. We'll give that a go. But it's also cut off the screen. Pretty much everything I've thrown at it cuts off the screen. But I think this would actually run at an acceptable speed, but because the display itself is ridiculously slow when it comes to its refresh, like even when I drag a window around, like look at that. Oh, that's, that's pretty nasty. 
But I, I'd say this game, if I played it on a uh, HDMI monitor, because the only way I've seen this so far is through this little display and remote desktop on the computer. Because I've installed remote desktop on here. Uh, well, a program that can utilize it. I forgot what it was called. I'm not a Linux user. Yeah, that, that could work. But I've also put on this USB a special build of the Genocide engine. Just wanted to see how it would even, if it would even work. And I was actually amazed to see it actually get, got into the level. Um, there we go. Alright. Oh yeah, I tried Bad Toys 3 and that didn't work unfortunately. Same with Professor Fizzwizzle. Um, Bad Toys just doesn't install. Uh, Professor Fizzwizzle instantly closes and then says thanks for playing. Uh, Geno Light, there it is. Alright, so you do have to actually run this with a command line because um, the, the actual the launcher I have for the game is actually once again bigger than the screen of this thing so it is pretty tedious let's go one which is the thing that runs Windows programs the thing was geno .exe what is no GUI and no shaders which is basically open GL1 mode Let's give that a go <laughs> and there it is at a at a snail's pace but the fact that it runs with all this emulation is freaking incredible Although I can't actually type anything on here, so I'm gonna have to plug a keyboard in. There we go. And holy. <laughs> it's uh, I never expected to see this happen on a little computer like this. Now it is very glitchy. Uh, graphically like I mean there's stuff going through the walls I, I say the uh, Z buffers got a bit of issues on it um, it's a little unfortunate um, and also if I go into the console oh shit. <laughs> uh, I accidentally spawned him through the floor let me try that again <laughs> there he is uh, yeah you can really see that uh, his hood is going through himself. Oh, you can kill him. <laughs> At like one frame an hour. Yeah, um, pretty nifty little device. Uh, battery life doesn't seem to be too long. It seems to be about maybe an hour. Maybe two hours, but hey, pretty neat. Uh, it also works, well apparently I, this just comes with uh, Raspberry Pis now, but you can actually just use NTFS drives too, so you can plug a whole hard drive, you can just turn this into a NAS, but hey, um, I'm probably going to release um, this whole image as just something you can download. Um, well, without, you know, XP and the genocide engine, I guess. Um, Cause like, it was just such a pain to actually get this thing crammed on the screen this small, like modifying the text. I had to go to a remote desktop like a million times to change the font, change one tick box or something in a window. Cause like, if I was to go and say, let's see, appearance. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit off screen there. Uh, it will be interesting, I might do a little bit of a mini-series where I just try to run stuff on this thing, like, just try out programs, like, will it run? That is the question. I did patch Clown Killer 2, it's like a Flash game, using a Flash decompiler to actually scale with the bloody window. Because it's one of those Flash games where it used to disable resizing and would only play at a fixed window, which by today's standards was 
something ridiculously small and even that ridiculously small screen was still too big for this thing so yeah um, let's give that a go but there you go <laughs> this now clown killer 2 is running exactly how I used to play it on my old Pentium 2 computer I had that computer from freaking uh, 2002 to like 2008 until I finally got something newer and that's when I actually started to like use the internet and stuff as well properly instead of having to go through on a, my parents computer put something on a floppy or CD and then <laughs> transfer it over um, but yeah play the uh, scale version there we go and we're gonna change the <laughs> quality down to low if we can. There we go. Uh, I mentioned it in my Clan Killer 2 cheats video. Now, I don't know how I'm going to record this. There we go. Yep. <laughs> this is exactly how I used to run it. You know the worst part? Why it sucked playing like this? You see that timer on the top left? That's still in seconds. <laughs> so. The game ends prematurely all the time. Well, I, I don't know how I used to play it, play it like this growing up. It was like when I finally got that new computer in 2008 and then started playing this, I was like, holy moly. This is a, quite an improvement. <laughs> yeah. But um, anyway, that, that's this little video. I thought if you found the demo interesting, um, let, let me know in the comments. I might do some more videos on it. Like I could try Half-Life or Counter-Strike or something ridiculous. Just, you know, because. Or I might even put it, I might actually put this build of the firmware back on the uh, older Raspberry Pi 3 that I've got stuck inside that little... A uh, little TV computer thing, because at least that's got built-in sound, at least it's 60 frames. And it's also about 480p quality rather than uh, 320. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, uh, that's this dumb little project. I hope you liked it. Uh, goodbye.